celebrating 10 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today, a sneak peek at the 10th anniversary season. Welcome to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. Wow. Thank you. It is 10 years later. I, I didn't believe it. I know a lot of people might have doubted. But it's 10 years later, and, and we're coming up on 300 shows. And I guess the place to start is by saying thank you to you. Um, if people don't watch your show, you won't have a show. And the people of this community have embraced this show. They've embraced these great stories of possibility. And I want to say thank you. Let me take you behind the scenes and tell you how we got a show to begin with. I always wanted to do television. In fact, my secret dream is to be on 60 Minutes one day. And I remember talking to one of my best buddies, Bill Gubbins. He said, Halloran, you want to do TV? And I said, yeah, but I want to do something positive. I want to do something, you know, that connects with the core of who I really am. Because I love to encourage people. I really do. So he said, maybe we can do a show called Anything is Possible. I said, I love it. He said, I'm going to go to Jeff Lee and set up a meeting. I'll go meet with him, and then you walk in late. I said, yeah, make me the guy that walks in late. He said, no, 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 I got a plan. So he goes to the restaurant. He's meeting with Jeff Lee. I come in stylishly late, and uh, Bill goes, here's a big idea. Jeff goes, Halloran? He said, yeah, imagine Halloran doing television, interviewing great people, great stories about possibility, local. It didn't take Jeff 30 seconds to go, I like Halloran, I like local, let's do it. Let's do it? Yeah, let's do it. Now we got to show, we got to find sponsors, we got to make it happen. So we go see Mr. Haslam. We start our presentation. Bill Gubbins is, you know, very much into data and all that stuff. So he's presenting a PowerPoint. And the captain of the team, Mr. Haslam, said, I like it, let's do it. And a show was born. So here I come with a possibility to people who believe in possibility, and they believed in me, and they took a risk. And here we are 10 years later, and the body of work is excellent, not because of me, but because of the great people who have been on our set and the great team we've assembled to bring you these shows. And I love it. I love doing this. And thank you for letting me do this every week. So it's sneak peek time. I want to give you a sneak peek at season 10. I'll tell you more of our story coming up, but let me give you a sneak peek. Let's start with Madeline Rojero. This was a fascinating interview. She's the first female mayor of Knoxville. You'll see a clip from Dr. Clarence Sexton from Crown College. He's incredible. And then Steve Davis. I'm just going to say Steve Davis. I sat down with this guy. We connected in a way like I've connected with few on this show. You've got to see this. Check it out. More of the story when we come back. Well, actually, the reason why I got into politics is that somebody asked me to. You know, I, I, I was very involved as, as the, the first 10 years that I lived here, I did. I was very engaged in neighborhoods. I wrote my thesis about, well, actually, uh, yeah, I wrote, wrote my thesis about civic leadership and participation. Uh, and that was in 19, that came out in 1987, I think it was. And I uh, was just involved in a lot of things in my kids' schools and started PTAs and things like that. But I still would not have run for county commission if I hadn't gotten a call from somebody saying, I wish you would consider this. I think you could do it. And my first reaction, you might be surprised, but my first reaction was, I don't think I'm qualified. Because I, I, was, I didn't really know what county commission did so much, because I had I'd followed city council a lot more. And I had just, I just didn't think that I could run and win. I, there was somebody who had been in office for 24 years. And, um, but they, I was assured, they said, no, look into it. I think you'll realize you are qualified for the job. Well, in 1978, God put in my heart to start a college, and I prayed and worked with that for years. Thirteen years later, we started Crown College, went to the Tennessee Higher Education Commission and did everything we were supposed to do with them to be able to start a legitimate college to offer associate degrees and bachelor's degrees and now with a seminary, uh, graduate degrees. And um, we wanted to train people to serve the Lord. Uh, as a matter of fact, we took a unique approach to this because what we're trying to do is to 
provide a biblical foundation for all the studies and the school, school of ministry, uh, school of education. Then there's a school of business and trades and the trades part of it, we're opening this fall, really excited about that. And then um, we have an international language navigator school where we're teaching people to speak English as a second language and other language studies so that we can navigate uh, through this world uh, with the language and doing it properly. So we're really excited about what God is doing in that school. We've, we've had um, more than 2,000 graduates. Our graduates are in every state and on every continent serving the Lord and in business and everything imaginable, but most of them in ministry. I had the good fortune. We have a farm over in Blunt County. I spent a lot of time as a, as a city farmer over there, uh, you, uh, driving my back, my, my bush hog, and having a good time with the kids. We love it. But I, I started playing golf. Uh, Joe Bailey brought me over to Holston, and, and so I started playing some golf there. Uh, played at Cherokee Country Club with, with a, a, a good man by the name of Ken Hall. And um, he, uh, he and I played, and, and uh, Tommy Overton, who, who had known my dad most as long as I can remember, uh, people, they just off, offered to take me over to play golf. And um, we came in afterwards, had lunch, and to my surprise, there was a, an application for membership. And, and they wanted to sponsor me. And these are people that are a little older than I am. They, they, they did, I don't think they did it because of me. I think they did it because they wanted to honor my father. Um, I think they did it. If it was a me, I don't think these people would have done this. But in honor of my father, um, I had to say yes. Aren't those some great stories? Madeline Roharo, Dr. Clarence Sexton, Steve Davis. When you see the full shows, you're going to be blown away. Oh, they're great stories. I can't wait for you to see the full shows. I want to thank our sponsors, Pilot, Home Federal, Covenant, The New Sentinel, News Talk 98.7. Thank you. We can't do the show without you. Support them. They are bringing you possibility. In fact, I like to say possibility powered by those folks. So thank you for that. I've learned a lot. I've actually been on the front row here at the Harvard of Possibility. I'm going to tell you what I've learned and give you some more clips from season 10. This is Anything is Possible. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J. Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up... Daddy, they missed tackles in college just like they did in high school. I couldn't believe anybody would ever miss me. It was one of the greatest days of my life. I love my job. If I look like I'm having fun, I am. I, I love this. These are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. This is an exclusive sneak peek of season 10. I'm Hallard Hilton Hill. So let me tell you what I've learned. Uh, I got three things here. One, possibility people lead the world. Anytime you see a community moving forward, a city, a state, a nation, it's because people believe something's possible and they go to work making it possible. The word possible means able to be. Pat Summit was my first interview. We have the preeminent women's basketball program on planet Earth here. And it is that because Pat believed it could be that before it was that. Possibility people do that in communities. Second, a question. This is a question that I've, I've had and I see in the minds and the hearts and the performance of people who are possibility people. What does failure activate? how they respond to that question. So how do you respond to failure? All of the great people I've interviewed, you give them a massive failure, they find a way to grow out of it. Inky Johnson is one of those. He told me when people doubted him or he had significant failures, it made him grow. Final thing I learned is that success has a DNA. Here's the DNA of success. One is a dream, they believe. Two, there's determination, they fight for what they believe in. Three. There's a destination, they have an address in mind, and then for devotion. They are devoted to their values and their people. I've learned a lot. And as I've applied the things I've learned, doing this show has made me a better person. That's why I love doing it. Let me show you some more clips. Coming up, Becky Duncan Massey, 
Mark Smothers and Suzanne Lindsay from Buddy's Barbecue. What a great interview there. And the one and only Johnny Majors. I sat down for a two-part interview with Johnny Majors. That was incredible. You'll get to see all of those coming up. By the way, you can watch us online. You can look right here and it'll show you where you can see us online because a lot of people have told us, hey, I'd like to watch you on Sunday, but sometimes I can't. So we have a way now for you to watch us online or on demand. And if you'll check your screen right now, it'll give you instructions on how you can watch us anytime you want online or on demand. So check out these clips. When we come back, I'll kind of cast the vision for the future of anything is possible. I've had folks talk to me, you know, a lot of over the years and say, are you ever going to run for anything? And there just really wasn't an interest. Well, about well, about the time Ben actually uh, resigned from the Senate, a couple people talked to me about running for the Senate then. And that's probably when the seed maybe was first planted, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't the right time for my work at Sertoma. It wasn't the right time for my work in my personal life. And I didn't feel like that I was ready for something like that. <clears throat> and then, um, but just over the years through my work with Sertoma, I've, and we, you know, serve adults with intellectual disabilities, but I've been real involved in our statewide association of providers and been down, going down to Nashville for 18 years now. And um, <clears throat> a few years ago, I guess it kind of, I decided that if it was ever in God's plan and if the, everything, the timing and everything worked out, the legislator was the only thing I was ever interested in. Well, in 1990, he was diagnosed with melanoma cancer and he was told then, you know, two years. And of course, my mother didn't believe it and he didn't believe it. He was like, I can beat this thing. And mother was like, I know we can beat this thing together. We've beat everything together, you know, and they really truly believed it. Um, unfortunately, we were very naive when it comes to cancer, very naive when it comes to melanoma cancer, that um, it is a cancer that must be caught very early um, to survive it. And, and they were accurate, I'm afraid. It was almost two years to the, to the day that he, he died of, of the melanoma cancer. He was priming me to, to take over at that time. But, you know, I didn't have any idea it was going to be that fast. Right. And, uh, of course, when it got close to him, he knew he, knew he didn't have long. And he, he, he talked to me a little bit. He said, I have all the confidence in the world that you'll do fine. Take care of your mom and take care of this business. And I promised him I would. And from that day forward, that's what I've done. Yes. And uh, it, uh, it was scary. I was, I was scared. And uh, General Newland yelled from the stands. And I could hear him because I wasn't paying much attention to that, except it was quite clear. Who's number 15? He had a booming voice. Farmer Johnson, who recruited me, was a defensive line coach, played on Neyland's first team in 26. He said, a lot of people didn't think I could play. I was 150 pounds that, that, that day. And anyway, skinny. And he said, who is number 15? Farmer Johnson said, that's Majors from Huntland, General. Well, I didn't have time to be thrilled about it, but when the scrimmage was over, I not only survived, I was still alive. I weighed 144 pounds after the scrimmage. <laughs> I ran from the stadium up stadium to drive to the corner where the student center is now and had an Ellis and Ernest drugstore and a payphone. And I called Collect by Holland. I know my mother and father were very anxious about me and my confidence. I called home and I said, Daddy, my dad answered the phone. And I said, Daddy, they missed tackles in college just like they did in high school. I couldn't believe anybody would ever miss me. It was one of the greatest days of my life. Have you ever seen Johnny Major smile like that? <laughs> that's pretty incredible. All of those stories are incredible. I mean, that's what I've learned. I mean, you can see, I, I told you that success has a DNA or possibility has a DNA. Um, I told you that how you respond to failure is a big deal and that possibility people move the world. Didn't you see that in those clips? When you see the full shows, you're going to be blown away. I want to thank again not only our sponsors, Pilot, Home Federal, Covenant, the new Sentinel, Channel 10, of course, and of course our friends at News Talk 98.7, but I want to thank our crew. We have an incredible crew. I ask you to carefully watch the credits at the end of the show because this team of people that we've assembled to do the show, they are fabulous. 
I, I wish we had done crew interviews, Chris, if we had interviewed people on the crew and just tell me what it was like. Because one of the things we love about the show is as we're doing the show in between uh, episodes, we actually talk about what we talked about. It's incredible. I've got more clips coming up. It's the 10th anniversary of Anything is Possible. More in a moment. Coming up. My mom and dad didn't really understand what college was all about, but they, they knew that if I could get a college degree, my life could be better. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and these are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. I just, I had to stop and take a breath. I was thinking back to being a little boy and my parents providing what I call logs and lighter fluid. Dad had a little tape recorder and a typewriter and I always dreamed of doing a TV show. I wanted to be on 60 Minutes. And so I would make up these little TV shows and pretend to be on television. And my parents never stopped me. In fact, they said, do it, you can do it. And I wish they could see this 10th season. I think they would be proud. I don't think they would be proud of me per se. I think they would be proud of the quality of the work. Now, it's not me, it's these great stories. That's the thing that I love the most. The star of the show is possibility. The spotlight on possibility, the stories of the people who live that possibility. So I'm glad to do this work. My vision, um, I want you to dream big. I want us to go nationwide with the show and worldwide. And I want to inspire you to write a better ending to your story. Young people watch this show, young people, you need to dream big and do big things. We're all about that. So I got some more clips for you. Um, coming up, Amy Crawford, Alvin Nance, and then the music of a young rising star, Logan Merle. We sat here on this set and she played and she sang and it was one of those moments where you know that a star is born. And I wanted to have a young person on this year because a lot of people think possibility is a function of time. Like you have to have a great, you have to have done a lot and have a big body of work. No, possibility is you start somewhere and you end here and in between you've got drive and determination and devotion and dedication and a destination. So Logan Merle will wrap this segment and then I'll come back and close us out. You're watching Anything is Possible. It's the season 10 sneak peek. Take a look at these. I didn't know right away. It wasn't until after I had been in the classroom for some time, in fact, even, even years, before I knew for sure that this is what God had created me to do. Um, when you go through school and they teach the process of how to be a teacher, uh, they tend to teach the fundamentals. Right. But they don't teach the passion. They don't teach the inspiration. They don't teach that, you know, how do you motivate a child? Um, you know, they, they talk about the techniques, but they don't talk about the undefinables right. in the classroom. So it, it took a few years in the classroom to get those rewards that, that aren't necessarily tangible rewards. The ones where you see a child who came to you in August one way is walking out the door in May. A completely different child because you had, you had something to invest in that child. You had something that you could give to that child that would make that child a better person. After my mom uh, and all our kids, all our kids in school, she actually started to work for the Chattanooga school system when the Chattanooga school system first started the Head Start program. All right. So here she is raising six kids. She's going to go to, and, and, and go to school and work with more kids. Uh, and she did. Couple, maybe a year into that, the next year, which was my junior year, uh, they, they decided to make it part of the school system and you had to have a high school diploma. My mom never graduated from high school, nor my dad. Uh, and, and my mom decided she was going to work on her GED. And, and, and really that was something that, that kind of helped me focus a little bit more about going to college because my mom and dad didn't really understand what college was all about, but they, they knew that if I could get a college degree, my life could be better. Wow. It could be different. Here we are. 
two teenagers in love I know that seems like a strong choice of words But love is just the feeling on the inside That comes when we're together Talk about forever while we laugh and count the stars Cause we know deep inside we're just kids With dreams of the success that we'll achieve So we make a promise to take it slow so we will last Because true love awaits until our lives are full and free our searching is complete and you found you and I found me. That's a sneak peek at season 10. Told you a little bit about how we got to this moment, how the show was created, some of the things I've learned and we're going to learn a lot more this season and kind of put that vision out there. I want you to dream big. I want us to go worldwide and I want you to finish your story so we can put you on the show. Look, more than anything else, after a decade of doing this, I'm humbled by the greatness that I see around me. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all the guests that have been on this program, and thank you to all the guests to come, because I will be calling you again. <laughs> and thank you for believing in us. To our sponsors, Pilot. To uh, the Pilot Flying J family, thank you very much for believing in possibility. Uh, it's been a decade, and we could not have done this without you. To our friends at Home Federal and Covenant, wow. You believe in possibility. Your organizations represent the best of possibility in our community, and I thank you. To the folks at the New Sentinel, thanks for partnering with us and helping us get the message out and share this possibility. And then, of course, our friends at News Talk 98.7. And as you watch the credits roll, pay attention to all of these fabulous people, to our producers and editors and photographers and makeup folks and all the people who helped to make this happen. I couldn't do this without all of these people. And they're the real reason that this happens. This is anything is possible. These are great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible, just like you. See you next time.